Okay, here's how to beat the first headless in Sekiro. He's found hidden in a cave fairly early game, not far from the Ashina outskirts, outskirts wall, stairway travel idle. I'll show you the path there now. I should point out, Headless isn't meant to be fought as early as when you can first access him. Later in the game, there's an Umbrella Prosthetic upgrade called Phoenix's Lilac that, when combined with a skill called Projected Force, makes dealing with Headless a walk in the park. Before you get that upgrade, Headless is a major challenge. There's a sign along the way that pretty much says it all. Turn back if you value your life. And you should really listen to it. I really do recommend postponing this fight until you have Phoenix's Lilac Umbrella. Okay, assuming you'll completely ignore that advice, let's move on. We'll just keep moving along the cliff face here. You have to jump down and grab onto that ledge. We'll go all the way to the main boss arena, which is through a cave once you're off here. I should say mini boss, he's not actually a boss, he's a mini boss, but boy oh boy, he's one of the toughest mini bosses you'll face in the game, at least at this st early stage of the game. Later on with Phoenix's Lilac Umbrella, not so much, but at this point of the game, he's extremely difficult, so don't expect any guide to make it easy for you. Okay, we're almost there. The first thing you're going to need is two items. One's called Divine Confetti, and the other is Pacifying Agent. Divine Confetti is an item that makes it possible to hurt Headless's health. Without it, you can't hurt him at all. Divine Confetti also prevents damage to your own health when you perfectly deflect his attacks. It, but if you don't have Divine Confetti, you can't hurt his health and you'll also get hurt, you'll take damage to your own health even if you deflect his attacks perfectly. Pacifying Agent is an item that completely removes Terror Buildup. Terror is a status effect you get inflicted with if you block Headless's attacks imperfectly, or if you perfectly deflect them without Divine Confetti active. When your Terror Bar gets to max, without resetting it using Pacifying Agent, you will insta-die. These are both rare items and you have to play through the game to get them. Locations and farming routes for finding them is really a subject for a whole other video though, uh, I suppose to help with that, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. For now though, know that you should have as much confetti and agent as possible before starting this fight. At the very minimum, I suggest three divine confettis. If you deflect headless pretty well perfectly for the whole fight, you can get away with having zero pacifying agent because perfect deflects with divine confetti active doesn't give you a terror buildup. But headless's attacks can be tricky to block, so don't expect it to go perfectly like that. Basically, you get as many of these items as you can before you start. Alright, before we get into the nitty gritties of the actual boss fight, let's take a look at the arena. I've actually cleared the boss here, he's not here anymore, so this is the best way I can show you how this arena is laid out. It basically has three levels. Uh, the one I'm on here, this little platform is arguably a fourth level. But ignore that it even exists because during the boss fight, going up there can get you into trouble. So three levels only. There's a middle, er this is the middle area, which is like the most open area, but it does have a lot of these little statues and rocks that you can get stuck on. And then there's the lower level down here, which is a very tight and confined space. One that can really mess you up if the boss gets you down here. Uh, and also, when you leave up these platforms, it can really mess your camera up too. I'll show you if you put your back to the wall, you, your camera can go bananas when you're trying to fight the boss here and it can be quite troublesome. So the point here is you want to really avoid the tight cramped spaces, the, the lower level and the upper level as much as you can. You want to try and keep the fight in the middle level. With one exception, and that's there's a little cave here. This is actually an exit point from the boss arena, but you can actually use this to kind of cheese the boss right there. I'll show how that happens, how you can do that later. And it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not strictly a, a cheese method. You still need to be on point with deflects uh, because he can still kill you there. You still need to get close to him to do damage. And it's actually, I don't recommend trying to do it that way, but it is possible to do it that way. And I'll show that later. First though, let's look at what happens when you fight the boss without Define Confetti. Remember, Define Confetti is needed to hurt the boss's health when you attack, but it's also needed to prevent you from taking damage when you deflect perfect attacks. Look at my damage going down. I'm deflecting all of those attacks with absolute perfect timing, but my health is still depleted. So each blow still hurts me. 
So basically, if you try and fight without Divine Confetti, you're going to want to heal yourself constantly. Because if you don't, you're going to die. Which is also going to happen if you do use Divine Confetti, but don't deflect perfectly. Watch what happens, and this is where Pacifying Agent comes in, if all we do is block but don't deflect. See the terror bar? That's the purple bar above your posture meter. Now, as soon as I get free, I'll take a Pacifying Agent, right now and you see the bar disappears if that bar had gotten to full which it would have from only three blocks based on that da that amount of terror damage i would have died instantly so let's see that one block that's filling up a bit two blocks it's filled up a little not that much then oh a lot more then now i'll jump away because he's teleporting behind me and i'll take another divine confetti to make sure that doesn't run out now let's block and see what happens not deflect we're just blocking all right, very full, three quarters full, and bam, dead. The, the terror bar got to full, and it was an insta-kill. So yes, if you're not deflecting properly, you will need Pacifying Agent. To start the fight, you can stand right here, pop a Divine Confetti, sprint jump off onto the boss, get in a few shots, and then back away. That way it works pretty good sometimes, but other times the boss can pretty much go crazy on you and kill you shortly after landing, or, like you're seeing there, can immediately open up necessitating the need to deflect and deflect and deflect. A safer method is to jump into the middle of the arena just outside of the reach of the boss, but occasionally he will just start throwing homing missiles at you. You can immediately safely jump to this corner of the map to avoid them, and then you can hope, a good thing can happen, he can leap into the air and fly at you. You can block it, and then if you do that, you can get six easy hits in on him before you have to get out of there or deflect any follow-up attack. Five absolutely definite hits before you have to, uh, before you can safely get out without having to deflect. If you're comfortable with deflecting, then jump onto the boss and try to get in some easy shots. If you're not comfortable with that, then I definitely recommend jumping into the middle of the map where you will almost certainly be safer. And now that we've looked at how to start the encounter, let's look at a few different methods for how to complete it. The first method is this one, and I think this will be the one that most people prefer to try to do, and that's in, that involves staying away from the boss as much as you can, waiting for him to do that spinning move there. When he does that, he's gonna teleport behind you. Jump away immediately, turn around, lock on, do a thrust, and, and two swipes. Every time he does that spinning move, there it is again, He'll teleport behind you, jump forward twice, turn around, lock on, hold your attack button to do a, a thrust, and then follow up with two swipes. You're guaranteed to be able to hit him with a thrust and two swipes every single time. You can see just doing that, I've managed to take his health down by about, well, I don't know, it's close to a third. So, yeah, but you don't want to end up getting trapped down in these smaller confined areas, which... You can see has happened here because he does chase you about a bit and the more you try to avoid him, the more he tends to push you around the map. But all that means is you've got to be prepared to maybe block once or twice while you move to a better position. So he's swinging around again, I jump forward twice, I don't have any confetti on my sword, I quickly put it on and take a swipe. But I don't take any more swipes there because it was too risky to try and take more because I was too slow with the confetti running off my sword. I wouldn't have been able to hurt him otherwise. There he's spinning around again, two jumps forward, turn around, lock on, thrust, and two swipes. Obviously this method is about depleting his health rather than his posture, which means you constantly need divine confetti active. But as long as it's active, it's also running down, which means if he doesn't teleport to you very often, you're going to run out of Divine Confetti before you have a chance to do enough damage on him. Uh, you'd need at least five or six Divine Confettis to successfully pull this off if you're not also being aggressive. So the point there is you want to try to get in a few attacks on him in addition to staying back waiting for him to teleport. And you can do that so long as, fairly simply, so long as you're quick to tap your button to deflect or block any attacks he gives you and if he does hit you or take some health off you then just jump out quickly pop a health item and then get back to baiting him to teleport to you also don't try to close the gap between you and him with a combat skill 
Something like Nightjar will help close the gap really fast, but he tends to react extremely quickly with a downward thrust of his sword that will instantly kill you if you do it. Sometimes he'll stand still to bait you to do a gap closing move. Don't uh, fall for it, just wait to counter his moves, take a few swipes or even just one swipe and then get out. And finally, a really good thing about this particular strategy is that you don't have to worry about terror. Because you're not blocking him constantly, there's no terror buildup for you to worry about. And if you do block him and get some terror, the terror bar will actually naturally go down as long as you're not doing more blocks and taking more damage from him. So you don't have to really worry about pacifying agents with this method. All right, let's look at another method of beating him. This is more of a cheesy method, but it's not total cheese. It still takes a lot of blocking and deflecting skill to perform correctly. The idea behind this is you want to lure the boss up to the top level to where that cave is that we showed that I showed at the start. And what you want to do is you want to try to get him to follow you. As long as he's down there, he's not going to follow. You want him to do his spin around so that he teleports up here, or you want him to, to walk up. Just don't stand too close to the edge because he, he spun around then, so I know he's teleporting up, and there he is. Okay, now that you're in the cave, from here, you basically are going to try just to thrust kill him. It seems very cheesy, but you can die here very easily because he can swing his sword through the edges of the cave rock. You saw that just then. So you want to try and pick your moments, but he will go... Uh, bananas on you and you do have to be on point with blocking and deflecting but this is a really good way to learn blocking and deflecting against him because uh, he doesn't he, he'll never teleport behind you so you don't need to worry about the map you don't need to worry about moving around the map all you need to care about is trying to get an attack on him whilst blocking and deflecting any counters that he does to you of course you can't really see his sword for some of his attacks with, when you're standing in this cave, so you have to get used to his movement, and for that reason, blocking can be a little more troublesome. So I would guess you're going to use more pacifying agents with this method than any other, just because not seeing how to deflect him properly can be a little difficult. But the good, the good thing about this method is you can always take a breather and step back in the cave to take that pacifying agent or to pop a divine confetti or to use a health item if you need to. So yeah, I would argue this is probably the easiest way to beat the boss. It's not really a cheese. You will still need to block and defect, deflect very, very well. But uh, yeah, this is the second method I recommend, especially if you're not feeling particularly comfortable with running around the outside and also trying to block and defend and pop items at the same time. So the methods I've shown you so far rely on depleting the boss's health. Now I'll show you a method that relies on depleting the boss's posture. For this to work, I highly recommend that you unlock the skills Ascending Carp so that you can do more damage to the enemy's posture once you perform a deflection and Descending Carp which gives you a window of a few seconds to do more damage on the enemy by attacking them after you've done a successful deflection. Now both of those skills aren't absolutely essential, but they are extremely helpful and I highly recommend you have them. Otherwise, what is already an extremely tough mini boss fight is going to be a lot tougher. I'll talk about the deflecting itself in a moment, but before that, know that with this method, you really want to apply pressure to the boss's health. So you want to attack as much as you can. The reason for that is the lower the boss's health, the harder it is for the boss to recover their posture and also the faster it is for their posture to, to get wrecked. So basically, it's kind of like an inverse proportion thing. The higher the health, the harder it is to break their posture. The lower the health, the easier it is to break their posture. Just like in the first method I discussed, the key to doing that is to wait for that spinning move jump forward twice because he's teleporting behind you, do a thrust and then get in a couple of swipes. Now, the difference between this and the first method though is because you are trying to deflect the enemy attacks, you can take the risk of doing three uh, follow-up swipes after that thrust if you want. Just get prepared if you do do that third or even a fourth extra swipe if you feel comfortable to do so, that you're probably going to have to immediately deflect a counter blow by the boss. Uh, one thrust and two swipes is always safe, anything more than that, and you're probably going to have to be right on point for deflecting what comes next. The deflections themselves, though, can be a bit tricky. The boss's attacks are not all the same speed. Some of them are slow, 
Some of them have slow wind-ups and then have a fast attack right at the end, and others are just plain fast. And then on top of that, you've got to be aware that the actual perfect deflection timing on all of those is not the same for every blow. A rule of thumb is you wanna to try to uh, press your block button the moment every single attack he does is about to hit you. I mean, that's a standard rule for deflection, but with this guy, it's it really comes down to the very, very last microsecond. At least it does for most of his attacks. That big overhead one, you wanna press your block button when his sword is about halfway down his body. With the swipe attacks he does from the left and right, you kinda of wanna tap your button just before they arrive rather than just as they arrive. My biggest tip for success though, if you're taking the deflection path, is to stay just at, just within reach, just at the tip of his sword. Um, don't get in close, whatever you do, don't get in close to him. Only get in close like that after he's teleported, but that's about the range right there. You wanna be just at the end of his sword. And the reason for that is it makes it a lot easier for you to spot the swing, the arc of his sword to time it at the very last minute. It also makes it a little easier to stay out of range or to back away out of range when he does that one, the big swipe he does before he teleports. That one's probably, or arguably, the most difficult one to block until you get your timing down pat. It does a hell of a lot of posture damage to him if you, once you get good at blocking it, but before then, it can be very difficult. So staying at the tip of your sword, as soon as you see him lean back and start to spin around, you can just back off a bit and avoid it. And another reason why staying at the range of the tip of his swing uh, is the best place to be is because he also has another move where he doubles down on his overhead swing with his sword and follows that up with a, a left-handed, his left-hand punch. If you're in close, he will get you with it unless you're lucky enough to tap your block at the right time. But if you're constantly at the tip of his sword range, that's a, a move you never have to face or never have to worry about. Since this is a battle that really relies on pinpoint timing for deflection, I highly recommend if you use a controller that you bind the left trigger to block and the right trigger to attack. Uh, you'll find that just that change alone can make battles like this so much easier. And that, having a controller config layout like that is especially helpful against enemies where you have to block, you have to attack, you have to jump, you have to Makiri counter and you have to dodge. The combination of all those button presses is made so much easier when block is on the left trigger. And that's about everything I've got for you. One of the methods I've shown so far should be enough to get you through. If you choose the deflect path, uh, that I'm showing now, that's the one where you'll have to definitely put in a little more practice just to get your timing right on him. But I'm sure with time, even then, you'll be able to get through. And even though this video is already way longer than I would like for it to have been, I'll close it out by showing you a full fight using the deflect method from phase one to the end of phase two without me narrating it so that you can enjoy it the way it's meant to be enjoyed. Bye for now.